Hey guys, it's Wayne from Sling Pilot Academy here. I'm really excited about this next video. Uh, every three months we do an induction here, so a group of new students starting in the academy. Uh, we did one back in August and uh, put 11 new students on. I wasn't there, unfortunately, but it's a really fun day. Uh, students love it, of course, because they're getting started on their, on their new journey and everyone here gets excited. Uh, it's a full day. They come in, have breakfast with us, lunch. Uh, we give them a full tour of the facility go through all of our kind of operations and procedures and how things work and what they can expect over the next six months or nine months in the academy. Uh, so it's a really exciting day, we have a blast. So stay tuned and see what a normal induction day looks like. To start the day off, the new students get seated in the academy hangar for their welcome. Big welcome to all of you guys. This is my business partner, Jean. Our business partner, Wayne, is, uh, is out uh, today. He really wished he could be here. And you guys are making a, a bold choice to uh, start a, a path that's going to set you up with a career that is filled with adventure, travel, of course. Not only that, it's a career that pays you more than just about any other career out there. So you, you guys are really in a special place, maybe in like 13, 14 months. Some of you guys will be flying big turboprops um, on your way to the airlines. And in two years from now, uh, if you guys work hard, pretty much all of you could be flying, flying jets at a regional airline. After the welcome, students, instructors, and Sling staff all introduce themselves so everyone can get to know each other. That's great to have an opportunity to get to know everyone. At about 11 o'clock in, in, in nine minutes, oh, there he is. Oh, we can start early. After a quick break, we have a guest speaker. This time, our guest speaker was from the Torrance Tower to let our new students know about some of the do's and don'ts around the airport. The Torrance Tower is a training tower, so some of the controllers are learning just like our students. We then briefly talk about an average day and expectations at the academy before having lunch. And um, when you're a student, you, you're responsible for a few things, like you're responsible for showing up, responsible for studying, responsible for being on time, being available for flight training, keeping up with your King's courses, being professional and responsible, but you're not responsible for doing anything you don't know how to do. Like, you're not responsible for keeping your own logbook up to date. Um, your instructor is responsible for that. Um, so that's, that's the first three month period. The second three month period, you become a pilot. So a lot of you guys are already there. So now you're also responsible for the airplane. Third and final three month stretch, this is where it really, it really accelerates. Now there's much more responsibility on you. During lunch, Matthew asked a few of the students why they chose Sling. This is what they had to say. Uh, my name is Francis Sison and uh, I chose Sling because of, I really like the community aspect that I saw when I toured here. Everyone seemed like a family and they were here to help each other. And that's something I really um, value in like a school because I feel like it's a lot easier to study and be focused when you're in an environment that just promotes that and I think Sling has a has the perfect environment for that. My name is Tiana Puglisi and I chose Sling. I actually heard about it through a friend um, who's a CFI here and he uh, really encouraged me to come and check it out. So uh, I did and I just kind of fell in love with the environment and the people were super nice and everyone was super helpful. Um, so it just seemed like the perfect fit. Uh, my name is Jonathan. I chose Sling after watching a bunch of like uh, the YouTube videos on Mojo Grip and all that and just convinced me like uh, how nice the planes are compared to like I have like 200 plus hours in the Cessna and this is I haven't even been in the plane yet I just know it's way better so that's like the whole reason I cho chose this program. Following lunch Matt gives a safety talk and a walk around tour of our facilities. We basically have done probably about 35,000 hours of flight instruction in the last three years, if I just take that sample, without a single uh, accident. And um, that is no accident. That, that only is, is a fact because we, we are constantly working on safety, but um, we, we need to all be focused on that number one at, at all times, because uh, that way we can keep it, uh, we, can, we can mitigate the risk as, as much as possible and we can keep it real safe. This area here is normally just like a common hangout area. Use it any time. Um, of course, you can see the schedule here on the computer and like all of our airplanes up on a map. This is where you'll see Mike or whoever the dispatcher is. They'll, you'll have a little interaction. You'll take the bind and the book and the keys. And uh, so this is kind of the check in, check out and check in process. There's some, there's some swag and some like charts and things that, that we can buy over here and some shirts and stuff. 
over here. There's water over here. There's some uh, cupboards over here and a fridge. Um, okay, we'll keep moving this way. Yeah, a little locker. So grab an empty one if you like, if you want to keep some stuff here. Um, feel free to like sit up and like hang out there, uh, you know, for, for your study period that day. Um, st stop just shy of like getting a pot plant and putting up pictures of your whole family, but like make it available for someone else. But feel free to like make yourself comfortable for the day or so. All of you will spend about 50 hours in this simulator. Of course, it's a great way to get um, very condensed IFR experience without wasting time like pre-flighting, gassing up. This is an FAA certified simulator, but time in this with an instructor doesn't count towards the commercial certificate. So we use this for people who are not who are not trying to meet 250 hours. But you guys are welcome to get on this thing anytime and fire it up and hone your instrument skills at no charge. This classroom, of course, it's air conditioned. I wish you'd been in there all day. Um, this is used typically from you know nine to. 11 and then 11 30 to 1 for the two primary ground schools then during cfi academy um, it's used at different times of the day so they were just in here for two weeks they just finished a little while ago and then for multi-engine like ground schools we take it up for like a few two-hour blocks you know over the course of a week um, when it's not in use like right now feel free to turn on the air conditioner and use it as a study area but then if a scheduled class comes in just vacate for them Let's keep going out here and let's take a little walk to maintenance. This is kind of where you normally walk down with your binder. Um, our two gas trucks are there. Only instructors drive the gas truck. So come on in a little closer. Like I said, respect, respect the line when, you know, when you're coming in here later on. Um, but if you want to like talk to maintenance, you can just kind of like wave at them and say, I need your help and they'll come and help you. These guys work really hard. We have to like let them focus. Just like when you're busy flying, you don't want people like pounding you for stuff. So respect them. And these guys are a great resource uh, for any kind of like mechanical questions that you have, and they'll help you out. You know? Onwards. So like the reason, one of the reasons why we're like at least 20 grand less than any of our competitors is because we use car gas in fuel efficient airplanes. It's, uh, it's a no brainer. We have a low carbon footprint. We spend less money and uh, we use unleaded gas instead of leaded in, in all the two seaters. So let's walk across here. So, um, you know, we had the talk from Joey in the tower. This is called the non-movement area, which you guys who are pilots might know about and those who are going to become pilots will know about soon. But the non-movement area doesn't mean you can't move. It means the FAA doesn't control this area. So come this way more. This this is owned by the city of Torrance. The, the FA is obviously watching out, like the guy said, making sure that there's not cars whizzing about. But this is like the city of Torrance. So we're allowed to be here, um, but we have to act super professional. So this is where all of our airplanes park. All of our airplane spots have this little roundel here. Our two tech nams, uh, one is over there, one is over here. Uh, when you guys start flying those, that's a lot of fun. Again, like everything in aviation is just constant learning and taking constant new steps. And then uh, that Slink TSI over there, the four-seater, that airplane, like the Technams, is available to fly in IMC in the clouds. So if anyone wants to get more in the clouds experience, it's, it's like a little more expensive, like $600 gets you 10 hours block upgrade to that airplane compared to the two-seater. So if anyone wants to do that, try a more high-performance airplane with a constant speed prop and be able to fly in the clouds, that's available and you can like block upgrade 10 hours to that airplane. We're also getting a decathlon. Um, we've been bringing in an outside decathlon for flight instructor spin training, but we we buying a decathlon uh, this month. Uh, so you'll also be able to, you know, in your time building for commercial, if you decide you want to like get some hours in tailwheel or do basic aerobatic training or whatnot, that'll be a, an available upgrade as well for a small cost. This way. So these two hangars here are sister business. We build a uh, the four seat sling TSIs, and that gives us, it's part of what gives us our, our broad experience with the airplanes. So let's go take a look. Yeah. So this is like uh, position one, two, three, and four. The airplanes start like this, and they get uh, built up as you go through this line over here. 
and then they move next door for finishing. And um, one of the things about being a pilot is you have to know your system. So when someone says, can you fly a Boeing 737? Hand flying wise, it's not going to be a big leap for you. But in terms of all the systems, like what all those little switches do, how do you know how do all of the electrical systems tie into each other and whatnot? That's that's what you're going to have to study. Having the, the the build facility here means you can see airplanes in various stages of construction. So, like, take a look at these pedals here. You see how the, the left pedal on both sides is connected, and this is the right pedal. And then. Look at that mechanism in the middle that stops you from going beyond a certain point. So seeing something open like this is, is a way to understand how it works. If someone shows you a schematic, like it's, it's more difficult to understand than seeing how it looks. Seeing something opened up is a great way to learn about it. You know, we have a, you'll, you guys will have like an engine systems lesson uh, next week where you go over how the engine works. And when you can see it all opened up, um, or under construction, it's, it's easier to understand what's going on normally. So like, yeah, this one's, this one's almost ready to get the wings on. So here you can see the engine completely opened up. You can see it in maintenance as well. Um, yeah, but this is, this is just like the engine in the two seaters, except this one has a turbocharger. And this is where the airplanes get painted and finished and whatnot. Okay, let's go back to the classroom. <laughs> uh, there's, there's about five or six or seven people that use this every day. Feel free to use it anytime you want. Um, just wipe it down after you're finished. Just wipe down all the benches and everything you've been working with. But it, it's available for anyone. Um, while you're expanding your brain, then you can also expand your biceps. Or choose any one muscle that you want to be huge and just make it big. <laughs> At the end of the day, the students have a course review and four flight orientation where they learn to navigate the apps and use the logbook feature. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you on Monday. It's going to be a brand new week and congratulations. Remember to like, subscribe and check out some of our other content. We really appreciate it.